Hey people, I just got this brand new Cecilio electric violin in the mail by UPS. Thought I'd do an unboxing video for you. Even though I'm sure there are dozens of videos like this on the YouTube already. This box is also stapled shut, so... I'm wondering how I'm going to be able to get through those. Violin Owner's Manual. This is probably how to set it up. I think this pertains to all violins and not just the Cecilio electric violin because it also mentions a sound post which according to my knowledge uh, electric violins do not possess. That's an acoustic violin thing only. So anyways, it's just telling me how, it, I already read it, so it's just telling me how to uh, set up the violin. It's a uh, hard plastic case covered with a very thin foam pad that's covered by this canvas type stuff. We got what feels like to be an empty pocket. And I have it the wrong way around. Here's one. A soft rubbery handle. Very cheap feeling. But also very soft. The size of the violin is 4-4 full size. And there we go. Turned out to be a lighter color of blue than I was expecting. Got this soft fabric felt material to protect it from dust, I'm guessing. I have this thing, let's see. Yeah, it's in the camera. I don't know why this is attached to there. Oh, the bridge just came off. Maybe this is to protect the tuning pegs? I don't know. It's a bugger to get off. The strings are very, very, very loose. Here's the bridge. Undo this. a little bit heavier than your average violin. They kind of did a crap job on the paint because I can see, still see the wood grain. Especially when shown to the light. Yeah, you can kind of see the wood texture. It's almost like a... I know it's blue, but it's almost like a green. Sort of a hint of green in there. It's actually <clears throat> more comfortable to hold than I thought it would be. But yeah, online it appears to be a very dark blue, like I'll show you a comparison. This here is my electric guitar, and you can see how blue that is. I thought it was going to be a little bit lighter color than that, but the same blue, basically. And it's apparently pretty different. If I can get the light on both of them. See the difference? I thought it was going to be a little bit lighter than my guitar, but it's got a lot of green in the blue, too. So you get the brick not the bridge but the uh, bow out of here river band crap totally messed that up
In case you're wondering my maturity level, I'm 24. And here, oh, oh, looks like one of the hairs broke. I don't know the uh, proper procedure for broken hair. It actually looks kind of cool dangling like that. I'm wondering if I should just leave it. You can barely see it on camera. I like the uh, when the hairs are long and it's just dangling like that. I like that kind of stringy look to it. But I think I'm just going to pull this one off or attempt to. I'm going to cut it off. The bow has no rosin on it, obviously, because it's brand new. It shouldn't. But in case you don't know anything about new violins, the bows don't come with rosin on them. There we go. I'm wondering if this is synthetic or actual horse hair. And it looks to be real wood bow, not fake plastic wood, which is nice. And either it's real pearl inlay or fake pearl inlay, but judging by the price of the $120 violin kit, I'd say it's probably fake. The nut on here is harder to turn to tighten the bow <clears throat> than my, uh, uh, I've got a Samuel Eastman VL80. Its bow is easier to uh, tighten the bow. But even though this is harder for the nut to turn, it also uh, makes the bow relax and get more taut uh, much quicker. I can do it in maybe half the turns of uh, my VL80. And I love the case here how you could just slide it in. Can you see that there? Yeah, you can just slide it into the pocket. And then you got the uh, little latch here. I probably have this upside down, that's why it's not fitting. Why are you not going in? I think the bow is too curved. I'll do it up top here. There we go, perfect. The uh, locking mechanism for the bow is pretty cheaply made. Again, it's only $120 electric violin. But it doesn't have the same locking quality. It doesn't have the same good quality feel as uh, the case of the uh, VL80 that I rented before. In fact, it's actually connected the uh, a stringy thing. See how I can pull that out? There's like a hair band mechanism or rubber band mechanism in there keeping it on. So now we got the amp cable with twist ties. And this actually feels quite nice. I'm not sure how good the quality is, but it's a really soft, flexible rubber. I mean, it's taut enough to hold its own structure. Like, see, like that? Yeah, great. Black wire on a dark blue background. See? It's firm enough to hold its own structure, but it's also bendy and springy. It feels soft and flexible, but it is a pretty cheap quality. So anyways, on to the next item. Is the headphones. Pretty much the cheapest that they could possibly put in here. Now I've got a very good quality pair of headphones. Where are them things at? Here we go. Th these are also a pair of cheap headphones, but I like them. They are... The Pro HT, made by someone, uh, yeah, that's all it says is Pro HT. 
And I got these off of HomeDepot.com for 25 bucks. They're Bluetooth headphones, but they also have a uh, uh, line-in thing. But they're very nice, and I use these quite a lot. <clears throat> so I'll probably be using those. <clears throat> Excuse me. Instead of these cheap things. I will, uh, the ear things turn in and out so you can hold them. And then put them around your neck. And turn these things so that they face up and the sound comes up when they're on your neck. So I'm going to put these on just to see how they feel. Okay, so as you can see, I've got them on. And... The padding is comfortable, but they feel like super cheap, crappy headphones. And I put them on my computer over there and started listening to like three seconds of a movie trailer. And it sounds horrible. It's like listening to someone talk into a, an empty Pepsi can. But the Pepsi can is surrounded by felt padding to reduce its echoiness is what it sounds like. I highly advise that if you were to get the Cecilio electric violin, get rid of the headphones or like keep them as a crappy backup and use some real headphones because these are just a piece of crap and they sound like it. They're somewhat comfortable to wear minus the part that when you put them on your head, they don't form to your ears. I mean, they're kind of like... They're, they don't really go on your ears. They touch your ears, but they don't really go on your ears. So moving on. Silica gel. Absorb the excess, excess moisture. See if I got that. Yeah, I got that in frame. And this is like, it feels like just cardboard. And literally, I think all of it's, it's an elastic band is the only thing holding this thing on. Not this elastic band, but this white elastic band is the only thing holding this on pretty much. So you've got the 9 volt battery, which powers the signal of the violin. So you got the vibration of the string, which transmits the vibration to the bridge. And that shakes on like a nearly microscopic level, transmits the vibration to this rubber pad here kind of rubbery plastic pad and that has an amp underneath it and this 9 volt battery which I'm trying to open uh, allows you to uh, plug the headphones into the violin and listen to it while you're playing without the use of an amp so you literally have a microscopic amp maybe like that size inside the violin so you don't need an amp as long as you have headphones and a good 9 volt battery. And this is really warm from being inside a warm truck. It just arrived on UPS minutes ago. And you've got probably the cheapest rosin in the world. Yeah, I was about right. It's like falling apart already. Got some dust on it. Cecilio high quality rosin. Well, if you can't see it, I'm not sure if you can. Yeah, you got these little tiny cracks in there. That's made, that's, those cracks are because this rosin is super cheap quality. And uh, it's probably usable. In fact, it's really cute. Uh, like, I'll compare it to my rosin. So here's my rosin from my uh, Samuel Eastman VL80 violin. And you can see that this is pretty much a sample rosin. Uh, you can see that the uh, plastic case is, well, maybe not on camera. But you can see that the plastic case, I can see it anyway, that's much cheaper quality. And it's obviously smaller. This being the, the one that came with the electric violin. It's very obviously smaller. And... You can see that, uh, yeah, it's like pretty much smaller in every way now. The cakes here, I think probably that my big one here, made by Samuel Eastman, is higher quality than the uh, one made by Cecilio. Because this big one here did not come with any, like, cracks or chips. Like, 
you could see like um, cracks and chips in the very bottom down there. And uh, my Samuel Eastman one, it has a few cracks and chips that I put into it uh, by scoring it basically creating the scratches on it but uh, it doesn't really have anything so I think even though they're made with the same tree sap it's the dark tree sap not as dark as you can get it but it's kind of a medium dark which means it can be used in all temperatures here's something I learned light colored tree saps are better for summer temperatures hot temperatures because they hold up better and uh, Dark colored tree saps are better in winter temperatures because the light ones get too brittle and dark colored uh, rosins are uh, best used in winter because in summer they are too soft. They get too soft in summer. But for a beginner, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, for a beginner, rosin is rosin. But if you're like an intermediate or professional, having the right rosin during the right temperature and right season is a good idea to uh, keep check of, like especially when you're performing. But a beginner, someone who's just barely starting out, don't worry about it. Like a medium colored rosin or a light rosin is the best thing you can do. Don't get like a super dark rosin because it'll probably be too soft. But anyways, I'm going on and on and on and you want to see the electric violin and I'm teaching you about rosin another video but anyways yeah it's much much smaller I'm debating whether I should keep the electric violin rosin because it's so cute or if I should give it to a neighbor kid who uh, she practices violin as well and she's been using her bow without rosin for like at least a month or two and she's breaking strings because of it breaking uh, bow strings bow hairs so I'm debating if I should give this to her or not. Just a cheap little tiny rosin. You can see the framework at the bottom, how cheaply the case is made. Okay, well, let's get the battery in the sucker and try and set it up. The uh, cover is actually connected by a hinge, so that's good. A little bit of quality in there that does not feel right unless I'm supposed to like super squish them down so you can get the 9 volt in there you have to just squeeze it real tight see if it turns on and it turns on now I'm going to uh all right I was going to put my headphones on and connect a cable to here and play it to see what it sounds like, but i am um, got a little issue here with the strings not being attached. These pegs are really loose, but uh, they get tighter as you push them in, so that won't be a problem. I'm going to compare weights. Here's the bow for my VL80. Totally out of focus. There we go. That's the bow for my VL80 compared to the bow for the electric. I think this is wood. It's just black. But anyways, my VL80 with a medium weight mute on it. Let's see which one weighs more. Just by handling them, and both of my arms are approximately the same strength, I'm going to say the electric actually weighs just a little bit more. They're both approximately the same weight, but the electric is noticeably more weight. It's not heavy, but it is noticeably heavier. Well, I am going to uh, put the bridge on, and I'm going to tune this up, and I'm going to put it in fast motion, so it'll turn this... 15 minute process into uh, maybe one to three minutes depending on how fast I feel like making it and how long my phone battery lasts.
Now, unfortunately, my tuner that I use is my phone, and I'm filming this on my phone. So I gotta stop the video while I'm tuning this, and get back to you later. Okay, so I got it all tuned up, and I was uh, going to tune it up in fast motion, but like fast forward, I completely forgot to do that. Anyways, it's tuned up. I uh, discovered something interesting in that I've got it hooked up to the amp. And the YouTube video just started randomly playing. Uh, I got it hooked up to the amp, as you can see. And I discovered that, unlike a normal violin, okay, acoustic violin with medium mute on it. And it just sort of stops. You can hear that, right? It sort of resonates and it stops. And stops. Not so with electric violin. Electric violin is like a guitar and that when you strum a guitar the sound keeps going and going and going until you touch the string again. So here's the electric violin. And then it stops. So it just keeps going and going and going. And now it stops. So it's got kind of the same resonance as a uh, uh, acoustic violin, but uh, it keeps going. I just noticed that my tuning pegs are not quite pushed in. The one at the top, that's kind of sticking out of it, but the one below it, it's kind of still inside. Anyway, it's something random I noticed. Yeah, that's just going to stay there. But anyways, it's really uh, surprised me by the sound quality that it's made. Like, I wasn't expecting, I was expecting like a scratchy sound. But it's just a really resonating like normal violin sound, which I'm surprised. The thing I'm not surprised about is that um, the volume knob and the tone knob uh, they're kind of wiggly, like not, it's just wiggly. It's not a solid knob that you turn, you can actually feel it wiggle a little bit. So I don't like that. But, uh, the volume knob is fully adjustable. Here's the violin with zero volume. And here's the same volume our same violin with max volume. And then I'll put the volume in the middle. Now here's the same violin with a tone, tone T-O-N-E, uh, all the way down. And that same violin with a tone volume all the way up. So it's interesting to play around with the tone a little bit. I'm going to pardon the interruption here. Sorry about that. But anyways, um, yeah, this is. Uh, exceeded my expectations except for weight. I was hoping it would be lighter than an acoustic violin. I don't know what wood it's made of. I can probably look that up and like put it somewhere on screen. But uh, the paint job is inferior quality. I could have probably done a better job. The one difference between this and an acoustic is that they've actually painted the back of the neck and on the, my acoustic, I don't think that it has any paint or coating on it whatsoever. But they actually did put a sort of glaze on the back of the neck here. 
and the sparkle on this violin is like missing in some places and it's exaggerated in others. There's more sparkle in other places. But uh, overall, like um, the uh, fine tuning pegs, uh, they're actually much better quality than on my $220 Samuel Eastman VL80. So they're really nice. They very easy to turn and of course they're metal so they're higher quality a uh, little helpful hint for you guys the uh tuning pegs that are like separate like that they're kind of out on their own those are actually lower quality than integrated tuning pegs they're like literally set into the plastic see like that these are higher quality even though the tuning pegs are plastic or those yeah well the tu the fine tuners even though they're plastic those ones that are integrated are actually higher quality than these ones because you can um uh, what was the reason for that This is so unprofessional, not coming up with the answer to that. But anyways, yeah, uh, they are, the integrated tuning, fine tuners are higher quality and better for a violin than these uh, free range uh, fine tuners. Get that up close to the camera so you can see it better. Yeah, these are the lower quality ones. Still work just fine. If you're a beginner, no problem, no shame. But uh, the integrated ones like I just showed you on the acoustic, those are better quality. Even though they're plastic and these are easier to tune, uh, they won't produce uh, a, as good of enough sound as uh, integrated tuners will. But anyways, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be, I think this is probably going to be my favorite over the acoustic because I got this so I could practice at night and like without disturbing anyone and with the volume all the way down it's much more silent than my acoustic with the heavy mute on. Because this is with the volume all the way down with no mute. And this is the sound of the acoustic violin with the heavy mute. So even with the heavy mute on the acoustic violin, which is supposed to mute it most of all, it's still louder than the electric violin without a mute. And I'm playing this, trying to play this all at the same distance away from the camera. So you always get the same, like the, vi the sound isn't, doesn't get any closer. What I've also noticed is that the, uh, E string side of the bridge on the electric violin is actually uh, closer to the fine tuners than the G string side. So you got the yeah, you got the G string side, which is further away than the E string side, which is closer away. I'm not sure if you can see that very well on camera. But yeah, the G-string side is, it's the way the, um, this plastic thing was installed, is how they have that. That's interesting. There's no exact science to, uh, bridge placement. It's more of an art of your personal preference of where you want to put it. You can make it an exact science, but it just deals with sound quality. The closer to the sound post, the bridge, the it, the bridge is the more sound you will have and the further away the f more forward the sound post is from the bridge and the acoustic violin the uh, more muted or quieter or softer sound will be and then producing different angles this way or different angles this way will also uh, produce different sounds too I'll uh, post a link in the description of this video to another YouTube video 
uh, of a guy who knows a whole lot more about violins than me do and I, than I do, and that's actually where I, I've learned my violin knowledge is from him. So anyways, now a comparison of the, not a comparison, but this is the sound of the electric violin with zero volume and the heaviest mute I have. And at the same distance, I'm going to do that all over again without any mute to see how much louder it is. A little bit louder, not bad. Still much, much quieter than my acoustic with a mute. But anyways, um, just unboxing and reviewing it. Uh, oh, and I forgot something that um, I put... A uh, violin play along video on YouTube, and I played it through the line. No, the yeah, the phone. No, the mic. Put it into the mic jack, and had it play through my amp so that it was going through a long violin, and I could play it along with it. And uh, it's actually quieter than the violin signal. So when you and you can't adjust adjust it through the violin to make the music louder than the violin when you're putting it through the violin it's just going to be softer than the violin no matter what but anyways going off of just the unboxing and playing around with it for the first 20 minutes uh, I would say this is a very good violin I really like it so far I'm probably going to be using this more than my acoustic just for the simple fact that it's more silent and I like that. I like to uh, practice in peace. And then when I actually get good at it, I like to show off with loudness. So uh, I think I'm going to like this. I uh, may or may not make a review on this after having it for a while. But uh, if you'd like to ha have me make a review on this, then go ahead and put it in comments below and say that you'd like to have a follow-up or a review video. And uh, let me know what you guys think. If you want one or if you have one, what's your experience with it? And I will catch you later. Don't forget to subscribe.